Julie here from Dynamic Viscosity. Um, I wanted to do a tutorial today that I could actually talk in. Um, unfortunately, though, I am quite sick with the flu, so don't mind my cough and all that crap that comes with the flu. Um, normally, I have a toddler running around making all kinds of background noise. I have to edit the audio out. Um, anyway, so. What I want to do today is a pour on this glass um, bowl, kind of a little glass bowl here. Um, what I've got is another vase that I eventually plan on pouring on, uh, wrapped in saran wrap, uh, just to protect it for now. Um, I don't want to paint it yet. Um, another cup to sit on top of that, and this to sit on there to seal off the opening and prevent any paint from getting inside. So, this is our setup. Uh, these are the paints that I'm using. Uh, they're multi-surface paints. I do intend on um, baking them um, and following the instructions on the bottle. It's um, let dry one hour between coats um, for glass, uh, clean with alcohol before painting, um, air dry for 21 days or bake. Uh, to the baking instructions are to air dry for one hour, place in a cool oven, heat to 350 degrees, bake for 30 minutes, cool in the oven, and then remove. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm planning on doing. Um, I've mixed a couple of um, colors using the blue and the navy, or yeah, the navy and the purple, sorry, <laughs> a little bit out of it. Um, so I've got the straight navy here. I've got kind of a darker, um, darker kind of bluish here, a little bit of a purple tinge, and then this is more of the purple. Um, last time I used this purple on glass, it turned out really pinkish, and I was, wasn't quite going for that. I was looking more for a purple color. And then I've got this beautiful um, turquoise type teal. Um, so what I am going to mix them with is some Floetrol, and I go through a lot of Floetrol, so I have this little handy-dandy pouring thing that I picked up at the dollar store, and I put a nylon stocking in the, uh, to cover the pour spout to help uh, filter clumps out, because uh, Floetrol can get kind of clumpy. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh my god. Uh, I swear after this video, I'm going to go lay down and take a nap. But... I haven't painted the last few days and I frankly am not happy with that. I must paint. So I'm gonna keep these a little bit thicker than I normally would just because I don't want them to run right off the glass. Um, so I'm just gonna stir that up. Um, very good. Kind of get that all mixed together. I know this is kind of a the boring part, but I figure I might as well show um, show the steps. So I love this color. This color plays so well with the blues and purples, and it's just such a pretty color. All right, so it still runs off pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that consistency. Um, you know, it does have a good amount of fluidity to it without being uh, too thin and runny. So this one, this one's still really, really thick. Um, I noticed with these uh, multi-surface paints, they're a lot thicker than your typical acrylics are. So I'm gonna pour probably a little bit more in there. All right, let's stir that up and see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's better. Ooh, I was gonna do a white one too. Oh yeah, and white. I think get my white over here. Although, I don't want to contaminate my white, so I'll let that sit over there. Let's keep it safe from splatters. <laughs> oh god. It's a little lumpy still. Yeah, just stir, stir, stir. That's good. That makes me happy. 
that one's not as thick as the other ones, so I'm not going to put as much blow draw on there. But we'll see what that does. I honestly, I eyeball everything. I'm normally ridiculously OCD about so many facets of my life that for me, painting is the one area that, although I could be very OCD and I could be very you know, specific with measurements and it's kind of ironic because I can't cook to save my life because I'm way too particular about making sure I follow the recipe to the tea and I get so hung up on specific you know, minute details that I end up <laughs> botching the whole thing. And, um, yeah, so I decided that with painting, it's the one thing in my life that I really just kind of wing it. It's pretty therapeutic that way. You know, there's so much chaos in, in the world, and you try and manage it as best you can and get through it. And, you know, paint is one of those things that, if you let it, takes on a personality of its own and it's pretty fascinating to kind of let it be chaotic let it unfold on its own and just kind of show you what kind of character is hiding inside so it's one thing I'm not really a control freak about which makes it one of my favorite things to do <laughs> uh, my bucket's almost getting empty I gotta refill it here soon oh god Feel free to leave some foolproof flu remedies in the comments, if you please. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I apologize. Ugh, I figured. I love how that looks. Oh my god, it's such a gorgeous blue. Um, yeah, I figured I might as well just hide in my house all day today and... Just me and my paint and my couch and my phone and that's pretty much the extent of it. So, there we go, that's gorgeous. And one last one, the white is super, super thick. It's like putty almost, I mean, it's chunky, lumpy. Um, so we're gonna definitely thin that way, way out. All right, let's see how that looks. Still not quite the consistency I want. A little bit more fluidity in there. A bit smoother viscosity. Sorry, I'm a nerd. You know what? Sorry, not sorry. It is who I am. So, authenticity is key, I guess. Mmm. All right, that's happy. I like that. That's good. Okay, so we're going to do a dirty pour on this one. But we're going to do it like the cheering style. So let me grab another. <coughs> sorry. Oh, goodness. Okay, sorry. Should have had that cup ready. Um, so we're going to do... A dirty pour, and I'm gonna get these out of the way. Uh, and because I'm a clean freak, I have baby wipes everywhere. I seriously do not know how I possibly lived my life without baby wipes before my son was born. I will probably still be buying them when he's, you know, 
18, moving out of the house, going to college, doesn't matter. I cannot live without baby wipes now. <laughs> then it painted, uh, paint cleanup, so much easier. Alright. So let's clean these off. Okay. So, a couple here. Now, one of the things I am going to do is grab an extra sheet of just uh, wax paper. And I'm going to put my an extra little 8x10 canvas taped off the back just to try and keep the edges a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm going to get that mid side. Let's get that over. I'll try and reuse these every once in a while. Um, I like, I'm playing around a lot more with the canvas boards versus the actual stretch canvas. Um, I kind of like them. It, I like how them, they're, especially if you do it on a wax paper, you can kind of catch the edges and not waste so much paint and help kind of control it a little bit better. Um, I don't know, we'll see how it, how it comes out. Um, like I said, I just kind of really started playing around with these versus stretched canvas. Oh, I know, enough rambling, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, back to, back to what I was doing. So yeah, these are the paints, happy, happy. Um, so I've got my five colors here. I wanna, instead of using a black, for the kind of contrast element here. I wanted to use like a dark navy. I think it, I don't know, I think it works a little bit better sometimes than black, but I wanna, I'm afraid this one's gonna get muddy. So I wanna try and figure out uh, a good, good pattern for pouring here. I may need some more white. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more white just to be on the safe side. Sorry. Ugh. Bear with me here, people. Do, 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 do. And I gotta refill that here. I'm almost out. I go through that stuff by the gallon, so. It's easier to control when you pour it in a container like that. All right, that gives me a good, good amount of white. All right, because I want to kind of keep these separated and not let them get too muddy. Um, so, yeah, let's get pouring. try and layer these with the white just to like I said, try and keep them clean try and keep uh, keep them from muddying up too much um, we'll just kind of use the white as a bit of a separator it's nice that these are a little bit thicker I didn't put as much flow draw on them so the white doesn't always or doesn't just automatically sink to the bottom <laughs> as it can tend to do if it's very, very viscous. And throw some of our lovely navy in there. Kind of Apologize for coughing my head off. I don't know if that's more distracting than a two-year-old running around. But 
Uh, is what it is. <sighs> you know, you figure it's May. Flu season should be over, but apparently not. I'm right. <laughs> just kind of layering these in here. Should probably move this a little bit and get you a better view, huh? Nice. Here we go. Oh, what did I just do last? All right, looks like we need some of that. And some more white. Gotta keep it separated. And my blue, my pretty navy blue. Chunky, it didn't stir good enough. Ah, oh no! Well, we'll see how that comes out. I don't know. Say, Libby. <laughs> yeah, see that sinking. Oh. Hopefully it sinks all the way to the bottom and we can catch it before it gets out onto the painting too much. All right. Come on. Oh, I am going to... Give the white a bit of a break and just work with my navy here. Act as a because the blue and the purple go good together, and the green and the blue go together. So we're gonna top off a couple this way. Yeah, we're getting towards the tail end here. <laughs> okay. Whoa, that's a lot. These are a lot thicker than I normally pour them, so um, this might be interesting to see, especially once we get it on dripping from the bowl down to the canvas to see kind of how it all plays together. I know, the boring part where you're trying to get the last drips out of the cup and it takes forever, but patience, people, patience. Gotta have patience. You know, so much in life is rushed. And rushing here, rushing there. You know, it's nice to find something that you can just take your time with and have some fun and kind of enjoy. All right. And sake of using up what I've got. Top that off there. Okay. All right. Get my cups out of the way. some of my mess here. 
So I've got um, freezer paper laid down on my work surface here, which is my kitchen island, because that's my art studio is essentially the kitchen and dining room of our home. Maybe someday we can have a nice space to spread out in and have some have some fun. But I'm gonna make do. Alright, so I've got one more layer of stuff to this pile. Um, this is honestly the lid from a bucket of screws. Um, I find ways to recycle. Um, they're really handy, especially when you're, you get this nice little lip here. You can move stuff around um, without having to actually touch the paint. All right, so now I'm gonna take my vase, take my pour cup here, nice and pretty. See, you can see, pretty. Nice and layered in there. And move this in. Take my cup here. Find a good shot for ya. Okay. level doesn't have to be perfect but just want to keep it keep it even so there we go that's what we're going with all right let's get to it the fun part let's pour some paint as I am, you know, OCD clean freak. I wear gloves. And I like to wear two layers of gloves. Because once I get done with this, I want to be able to peel a layer off and then start working with the canvas. And I don't want to contaminate and get that too muddy if I don't have to. So, it works. After this pour, I'm taking a nap. Uh, All right, here we go. And we're gonna start around the perimeter just to get good coverage here. This is kind of why I poured some of my excess colors on the because I didn't mind if they get run off. Um, I just want to first make sure we get coverage. I'm gonna switch hands here. Nice thing about having it on uh, this cup is it acts as a good turnstile for me. Make sure I get all sides. Nice, even coverage. All right. I'm gonna help kind of encourage some of that. Just cover up the bald spots before I get into my tree ring pour here. So we want to make sure we got a really good flow. We don't want any bald spots. Okay. It's kind of like covering the edges on a canvas. You want to make sure you've got your, your surface coated with a nice base to run from. Okay. 
Okay. I think we're good. So now we're gonna start our tree ring. I should have worried a little bit more about my Oh, we're looking here. That's beautiful. Yeah, we got some thicker chunks up here. With that, that white, white clump I was afraid of it made its way out. Ugh, gross. Oh well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Hopefully it sets up well. We'll see. Let me just kind of throw some swirls in that. Why not? Flatten it out. Spin it around. See how it would look like. That's pretty. I like it. And we got all kinds of cool stuff going on down here too. So I can't wait to get get this dripped off and start playing with what's down here. <laughs> I'll use my tail and my paint cut to start working on some of my corners here. Get those covered. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit, a bit too chunky, I guess. You know. <laughs> There's a learning curve. I'm still climbing it. But I'm climbing it. And I'm having fun. And that's what matters, you know? Could be sitting on the couch, staring at my phone, feeling miserable and not doing anything, which sounds tempting, I not gonna lie. But, trying to make lemonade, people. Trying to make some lemonade. You know? Corners covered here. I got some edges. I'm just gonna give this some time to really set up and do some dripping. I want as much paint down here on the canvas next.
just gonna off the bottle here. Yeah, multi dust. Don't wanna let it go to waste, so I'm just kinda scraping that one again. Alright, I think that's good. I think that's what I'm gonna get. But now normally with a regular pour painting I would throw some just blow troll and white paint down around the edges before I start tipping and pouring um, regular dirty pour around. But like I said, I've got this gorgeous runoff here, and we'll just kind of put it to good use. Might as well. Uh -huh. Might as well. And I'll just kind of work it in as close to that puddle without touching the puddle. Because it's so pretty, I just want it to retain as much as its own character as I can. <laughs> Alright, now I'm gonna get into a good point here. So, the nice thing about it being on this face here is it's really easy to move. So, I'm going to give you one last spin around and check out the handiwork here. Creating. Oh, I guess these. <coughs> oh, goodness. <sighs> Sorry. All right. So we're going to lift this up. Save some of the drippings from that. Uh, and I'm going to move that over here so it can dry. Alright. So now, let's work on phase B. So pretty. Love it. Love it. I love it. Well, part of me wants to just let it sit for another minute. And let it kind of fill in itself in the middle here. This is where priming the canvas comes in handy. Um, Kind of helps encourage the flow of paint around. So I'll just kind of give it a little nudge. Just a little nudge. Try and close up that gap there. Because I don't want to mess with the character of it too much because it's just too pretty. Okay. Let's see what we come up with here. Go nice and slow with this one. So many really neat swirls and fun stuff in the middle here that I just don't want to lose that. I feel like if I get too carried away tilting it around, it'll just get stretched out and I don't want it to get muddied up. So. Spread around here. Cover 
we're at the white spot. I know. It's not the most thrilling part, but sometimes in life you need patience. actually gonna pull that out before it messes with it too much because we are working with thicker thicker viscosities than normal I don't want it to be lumpy it's still gonna be lumpy if I don't fish it out Eesh. okay all right hopefully that heals itself Kind of letting it move at its own pace. We're not really forcing it too much because I don't want to lose all this incredible. You can see all that incredible fine detail it's got there. <laughs> all those drips turned into pretty swirls, and it's just gorgeous. At the same time, we want to stretch it out and give it time to take its shape. And this is where having wax paper underneath comes in handy because I want to, I don't want to let it run off the canvas yet. And I want to help kind of encourage coverage. So by kind of holding the paint on the edge with the paper helps. Ooh, I don't want to lose too many of those swirls. I gotta back off a little bit. Gotta be patient. Patience, patience. Alright. Now, this is. No silicone, no hair oil, no nothing for additives. No water even, just straight up Floetrol and paint mix. So there we go, we got that corner done. Let's tilt it over here, get this one next. Uh, okay, so kind of guide some of this paint runoff that's already over the edge to Kind of run down and add some coverage. Nice. There we go. Now we're getting there. on these corners here. I love how we were able to maintain a lot of the swirls at the top. Let's just hope they stay that way. We can kind of get it to run down a little bit faster on the edges here if we've got the Wax paper, we're doing some of the work for you. Flows a little bit faster on that than it does on the canvas. So, kind of run down. Get that edge covered. There we go. All right. 
And then last one. So I don't want too much to run off this guy when it's all said and done. Even if it means it's gonna be a thicker painting and let's just pray it doesn't crack. But I can always have fun when it works metallics into any cracks or I don't know. Just kinda take it for what it is. So now we've got some paint runoff on either side here. I can try and coerce it down to this corner. Almost there. Getting there. So close. Come on. Don't want to rush it. Almost there. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't want too much to run off. So there we go. There we have it. Now I've got all my edges covered. I've maintained a lot of the character in here. And this kind of fun little burst up here is what happens when you have the, um, the vase in the middle with the pour. Um, yeah, so I'm going to I'll have some fresh parchment paper. Toss my gloves there. Try and that up. Now, I use these little lids here that came on the like condiment cups. I guess, um, as spacers, just get some kind of airflow going between the actual painting itself and the wax, uh, parchment paper here, or freezer paper, and, uh, yeah, so that's how we'll set that up to dry. <coughs> <coughs> oh my god. Ugh, so sorry. I apologize for all the coughing in the video. I really am. Um, but, like I said, I wanted to get a video done that had some commentary that kind of explained what I'm doing. My family has been described as uh, obsessive learners and compulsive teachers. So when I learn something fun and nifty, it's kind of in my nature to want to share and teach others. So if you enjoyed this, by all means, please like and follow and I'll be happy to make more like it. Um, if you have any comments or like I said, if you have any flu remedies, please send them my way. Um, <laughs> other than... <coughs> Sorry, you know, Tamiflu and all that fun stuff that I'm already on. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm going to peel my gloves off here. Still managed to make a mess on my arms, but oh well. Um, 
think that's all for now. Bye. Oh yeah, probably want a close up of that. Pretty. All right, I'll try and get some pictures after it's kind of set up a little bit.